Once you've mastered the reloading process, it might be time to take on a new challenge. Gavin Gear here from ultimatereloader.com. I've done case forming, like taking 5.56 five, cases and punching the necks up to make 25.45 sharps, but I've really never done anything that extreme with case forming until now. I was talking with Starline recently and they mentioned 223 basic cases. This is kind of like a case that was on the production line and it was pulled off right before the body was tapered or the shoulder was formed or the neck was formed. And Starline sells 223 basic cases so that if you're a wildcatter or if you want to do your own case forming, you can basically take the 223 case rim and make whatever you want. So what I thought I would do would be to show you the process of taking 223 basic, starting here on this side, going through a set of successive case forming operations with annealing. As you probably saw, I recently acquired my annealing made perfect amp mark II here. And we've got some dies that you might not expect that are used in the process. And we're gonna end up with fire formed 2545 sharps brass. Let's get started. So before we get into the particulars of each stage in the process, I wanted to give you kind of a start to finish look at the process. So we start with a 223 basic case, then we do a sizing operation with a 300 blackout die backed out a little bit. Then we do a sizing operation with a 2545 sharps sizer die also backed out a little bit. Then we size with a 2545 sharps die touching the shell holder. Then we trim, then we load, then we shoot. This is a fire formed case and is a good baseline because it's completely formed to the chamber of the firearm and it should be ready for successive loadings. So we start with the initial anneal for the 223 basic cases. And where I started with this was to run an analyze on a 223 basic case. And from my overview video on the Mark II, you'll see how that works. It brings a case to the melting point and the machine determines how much heat is required to heat the case to a particular level and it gives you a code. The code it gave me for the 223 basic case was 115 and that represents how much heat is going to go into the case to anneal it. I actually upped that to 120 because I wanted to slightly over anneal so that I get more of that annealing down into the body. So what we're going to do for each of these cases, I'm going to hit start here, we're at 120, I've already entered the code, is each time we're going to just put the case in, hit start, and then for any, any of the cases that are hot, I'm gonna let them cool on the tray here. And we're just gonna go ahead and do that for all 10 cases. And as I'm annealing the cases, I'm setting them on the stainless steel tray here so that they can cool down. You can use a cookie sheet or whatever. It only takes a couple minutes. Once they are at approximately room temperature or slightly over, we can go to the next step. So now that the cases have cooled, I can apply a bit of lube. I'm just using Imperial case sizing wax. For this first 300 blackout die operation, I really only need to get kind of the upper third of the case lubed. Ready for the first forming operation. So for this set of forming operations, I'm gonna use the Lyman All-American 8, eight station turret press. This is a cast iron machine. It's got a good level of precision and it allows us to very quickly switch between the dies that we wanna use. And the first die I'm gonna use here is a 300 blackout die that I've backed out to just the right level to neck down just a little bit. And I had to experiment with not only the adjustment of this die, but the successive dies to make sure that we had a good incremental process to neck the brass down. Okay, and when we're done, we're ready to go and anneal again for the second pass. So I wiped the lube off of the necks of the cases, and we're just going to go ahead and anneal again with code 120. Okay, now time to let these cool, lube them, 
and form them with the 2545 sharp die backed out. So the case is cooled off, I applied lube. Now we can index our 2545 Sharps sizer die that's backed out a bit into place and start the second forming operation. You notice there's kind of a double bump here. I'm just working that case neck down to diameter progressively and getting that shoulder ready for the final bump, which will be the next pass. I'm being a bit conservative here and I'm kind of over annealing a bit, you could say but I just want to use the better safe than sorry approach here in terms of inducing stress into the cases and having them turn out brittle. All right, we wipe off the lube, ready for another anneal. So I did another analyze in my initial setup at this stage in the process, and I got a code of 126, and that's what we're gonna use now, because the properties of the case, the shape and the dimensions have changed, and we need to up our heat a little bit because the brass is further away from the induction coil. So back through the machine, they go. Okay, time to let them cool, give them some lube, and we'll be ready for our next case forming operation. So this time when I applied the lube, I also lubed the insides of the case necks because this time we're gonna be using an expander ball to get that neck to the appropriate dimension. So now we've got a 2545 Sharps die touching the shell holder, which get, should get us to basically the right headspace, if you will. And note that the neck is long, so our next step is going to be to trim. All right, let's go trim. So for the trimming, I'm going to use Lyman Case Trim Express. This trimmer does a nice job of holding the case perpendicular to the cutting head and it's got the spring-loaded action, which I've found to work well. So we're going to go ahead and turn that on. I'm going to hold a case here and then just sort of let it chew away at it for a while because it's trimming off a fair amount here. Okay. And push in and wait until no more gets trimmed. And a quick check, this thing can go to 1.760, we're at 1.743. I found that after fire forming, that moves up to about 1750, which is perfect, we're 10 under. And after we trim each of these cases, we're gonna just go ahead and give it a light chamfer on the inside and outside. So I wiped off the lube and blew out the chips with compressed air. The chips will collect on the inside of the neck because of the lube used. And we're gonna go ahead and do another anneal pass at 126. This will get us ready to load. All right, Neil isn't ready to load. So time for priming. We could prime on the All-American 8, but I already have Federal 205 primers loaded in the Primal Rights Competition Primer Cedar. So for each of these, I'm just gonna actuate the lever. Go ahead and check our depth here. Looks like we're good there. We'll just continue through.
All right, ready for powder charge. Got the Lyman powder measure filled with some H335. This is gonna make quick work of our charging. All right, let's eat some bullets. So I'm using some Spear 87 grain 25 cal hot core bullets. These are soft points. And again, with the turret, we just index that die into position. That's the seating die. And we can run these through. And done. <laughs> and now comes the fun part. I've got a 2545 Sharps Range Master here, ATN Excite Pro 4K. I'm trying out a new Tackstar Brass Collector. And uh, let's see what it's going to do. So I definitely like having that Tack Star brass collector. It sure beats crawling around on your hands and your knees. And so far this brass that I've been forming this way has been 100%. But there is one important thing that I wanted to show you about why fire forming is so important. So this is the Sinclair concentricity checking tool. We can check bullet runout or case net concentricity. And that's specifically what I wanted to show you here. And specifically, I wanted to compare the fully formed case prior to fire forming in the rifle here. We just put it into the tool and then we rotate it slowly. And we can see here what we've got about five thousandths of an inch total indicator reading there. And then if we ch compare that to one of the cases that's been actually fire formed in our rifles chamber, we're gonna see something a, a little bit different. So if we carefully rotate it, we're gonna see hardly any run out at all. And that's because the chamber in our rifle is totally true, the neck and the body areas. Whereas when we're forming, things can get a little bit distorted through the process. So once you fire form, you've got really a good baseline to build on. You should have accurate ammo from that point onward. Well, that was a lot of fun, and I hope it was helpful for you as well. Now I feel a lot more confident when it comes to case forming and taking on projects that are a little bit more complicated like that. And if you want to know more about the Amp Mark II or the Lyman All-American 8 or the Sinclair Concentricity Tool, I'm going to have some links in the video description. And of course, as usual, there is a full article that's going to accompany this video with a lot more detail. So this is great. I'm off to shoot some more 2545 Sharps. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't want to miss any of the action here on Ultimate Reloader, make sure you're subscribed with notifications. If you want to support me, you can buy one of these Ultimate Reloader t-shirts. I'm on Patreon. That link's in the video description. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.